After two decades, the Fast and Furious series is set to end after its 11th film, not including spin-offs like Hobbs and Shaw or the Spy Racers animated series, and the franchise will need to tie up a few loose ends before it wraps everything up. The movies have gotten bigger and more and more ridiculous over the years, so there's no reason that they can't end it with a big bang. I'm Greg Elliott with Screen Rant, and here's what Fast and Furious 10 and 11 need to do in order to give the Fast Saga the finale that it deserves. Life's simple. You make choices and you don't look back. Probably the most obvious and most called for thing they need to do is getting justice for Han's murder in Tokyo Drift slash Furious 7, or attempted murder that is, at the hands of Deckard Shaw. The trailer for F9 revealed that Han is in fact alive and well, but this opens up a whole slew of questions as to how he survived and where he's been all this time, though the series has gotten past things like that before. The fate of the Furious casually retconned Shaw from a villain into basically a hero, and although he isn't appearing in F9, it's pretty much a given that he will be back at some point, and you bet that they're eventually going to address his attempt to kill Han. If they manage to find a way for Hobbs to bury the hatchet with Shaw, it's going to have to extend some form of justice to Han as well. 20% angel, 80% devil. That doesn't sound anything like me. It ain't. And with Han returning, there's no reason why other characters can't, and it'd be a huge missed opportunity if the last chapters of the saga didn't pull everybody in that they possibly could. Given that Han is back, the return of his girlfriend Giselle is right at the top of the list, even though she seemingly died herself in Fast and Furious 6. We do know that Sean Boswell will be back as Lucas in F9, so depending on what happens there, there could be a spot for him on the roster in F10 and 11 too. Eva Mendez returning as Monica Fuentes would be a little trickier, given that she pretty much retired from acting in 2014, but it'd be cool to see Leon again from the first film, or Leo and Santos from Fast Five, and bringing back The Rock as Hobbs kind of goes without saying. And yeah, we know that it's a stretch, but we'd really love to see Brian one last time too. Cars don't fly! You may have forgotten, but once upon a time, the Fast and Furious movies were actually about street racing, but since about Fast Five, each new chapter seems to be about how each can be more over the top than the last. With Hobbs and Shaw's cybernetically enhanced bad guy and the Etion organization, the franchise is getting a bit more sci-fi-y, and go with us on this one. With F9 now set to take the series into space, we think it's time to go all out and introduce time travel. We know, the notion of time travel in a Fast and Furious movie sounds ridiculous, but should it? The movie has abandoned any pretense of being grounded a long time ago, and in a franchise that has gradually gone from street racing to now space travel, and essentially went, eh, while doing it, is it really that much of a stretch? When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious The Fast and Furious films have always been centered around family, and you know that that'll be a big part of how it all ends. As the center of it all, the biggest question we have is how Dom's story should wrap up. A final street race or Dom riding off into the sunset would be fitting, but at the same time, Dom going out in a blaze of glory, maybe sacrificing himself for his family, could be the most fulfilling way to conclude his story. However it all ends, we're sure that it'll happen just as it started, a quarter mile at a time. So keep up with us for more Fast and Furious news and info. I'm Greg Elliott with Screen Rant, and remember, doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning. Peace.